You know, when I did my video recently on how to enable Secure Boot, I didn't think we were going to need to have a part two. Yet, here we are. Stay tuned. Boy, that's what I get for thinking something's obvious. So, I did a video a couple weeks ago showing you how to convert an MBR partition to GPT so you can pass the system requirements for Windows 11 for Secure Boot. Unfortunately, I thought I was clear in that video that it could only be done on systems with a UEFI BIOS. Unfortunately, if you try doing this with a system that doesn't have a UEFI BIOS, your computer's not gonna boot after you follow those steps. And unfortunately, there's enough comments of people whose systems aren't booting that's led me to create this video here because I think a lot of people may have ran those steps when they really shouldn't have. So I'm gonna show you how to fix the problem today. And to start out with, what I needed was a system that doesn't have a UEFI BIOS. And that's what I got here with the remnants of our old e-waste gaming PC. I've tested this method several times and it works every single time. However, you really should have a backup. So I'm gonna show you how to backup your data beforehand just in case something goes wrong. But what you're gonna need in order to follow these steps is a blank USB thumb drive, and unfortunately, you're gonna need a computer that works. So if the computer you currently have isn't booting and that's all you have, you're gonna have to go borrow someone else's computer to follow the very first steps here. Don't damage your USB thumb drive while you're doing it. But what I'm gonna show you how to do is we're gonna put a program on this thumb drive called Hiren's Boot CD. This is a lightweight version of Windows that has some tools that you can use in order to fix this problem. So the first thing that we need to do is actually plug this USB thumb drive into a computer and get Hiren's Boot CD on here. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so to get Hiren's Boot CD on your computer, I already have the ISO here, but let me show you how to download it. Go ahead and open up Chrome or whatever browser you have and go to hirensbootcd.org. And from there, you're gonna wanna click on the download link and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and you'll see right here is where you can find the ISO. Go ahead and download that. And once you get it downloaded, I'll show you the next step. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to this in the description below. So if you can't find it, just follow the link in the description below. So with the ISO here, we're gonna need a program called Rufus. Now this is a program that I've used in many videos before and I've showed you how to use it before, but I'm gonna go over it again real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and open this program here. And then once the program opens, we're gonna to wanna to select the ISO that we just downloaded. So go ahead and hit select. And I have mine saved to my desktop, so we're gonna go ahead and click on that and hit okay. And now once this opens, you'll notice that it wants to create the partition scheme as GPT. Unfortunately, that's your whole problem right there. You're not gonna be able to boot from a GPT disk. So we gotta make sure to change this to MBR or our thumb drive isn't gonna boot either. And That'd just be horrible. So go ahead and click on GPT and change this to MBR. And then from there, you should be able to leave all the other settings themselves okay, but you wanna make sure that on the device up here, you have the thumb drive selected that you had plugged into your computer. If you have more than one thumb drive plugged into your computer, make sure you don't wipe out a thumb drive that you have important data on because this is going to destroy all the data on the disk. And once you're done, go ahead and push the start button and it will start the process. Now, of course, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna hit the start button, but the next step we're gonna need is we need a broken computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow the steps that I followed in the last video in order to convert this drive on this computer to GPT rendering it unbootable. Now, I'm not making this video in order to show you how to convert an MBR partition to GPT. I'm just doing it in order to break the system in order to do what we need to do in this video. However, if you'd like to know how to follow these steps, I made another video and I'll go ahead and tag that video here so you can go ahead and watch it if you'd like. All right, so from command prompt, I'm gonna go ahead and type MBR to GPT slash convert slash allow full OS and enter. And it's gonna go ahead and convert this disk now to GPT. Now remember, if you're running a system that does not have a UEFI BIOS like this one here, do not run this command. If you do, your system will not boot. And I'll show you why in a minute. 
Okay, so now that we ran it, I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer. And at this point, the system shouldn't boot anymore. So I'm going to hit power and I'm going to hit restart and we'll see how bad off we are. And as you can see, I have nothing but a blinking cursor on my screen. That's because this system does not have a UEFI BIOS, so it cannot boot a GPT partition. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it except for convert the drive back to MBR, which if you follow all of Microsoft's docs, they claim isn't possible. However, I don't usually trust Microsoft when they say something isn't possible. So let me show you how to fix it. The first thing that we're gonna have to do, obviously, is turn the computer off. And for that, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the power switch in the back, and then I'm gonna take my USB thumb drive that we just created and plug it into this computer. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and power the system back up. So on my system, I have to hit F8 in order to boot from a different boot device. However, your computer might be different. You're gonna to have to refer to the documentation on the computer itself in order to find out what key boots to a different drive. Now that I have this open, I can go ahead and select my USB drive and hit enter. Now, to give you just an overview, on Dell computers, you have to hit F12. On Acer computers, it's usually F12 as well. And on HP computers, a lot of times you have to hit escape and then F9. But if it's anything other than that, you're gonna have to look at the documentation yourself to find out which one works for you because I don't know all systems and you know sometimes I have to Google it too. So this thing's gonna take a minute to boot off of this thumb drive. So once it boots completely up, I'll go ahead and I'll meet you in Windows. Or at least Hiren's boot CD, which is kind of Windows. It's Windows PE, so it counts many many minutes later okay that took forever to boot up but now that we're booted up let's get into this thing and i'll show you how to do what i'm talking about okay so this is hiren's boot cd you're booted off your usb drive right now just so just keep that in mind you're not actually in windows but you actually kind of are in windows it is a windows pe version of windows 10. so the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually back up your system and to do that go ahead and open up this pc and from this PC, you'll see the local disk C. This is actually gonna be your hard drive on your computer. So if you open that up, these are all the files that you have on your computer. If you go into your user folder here, and then go into your actual user folder, which in this case is Rich because it's me, here you can find all of your documents, like your desktop, your documents folder, your downloads folder, things of that nature. Now what I would do at this point is go ahead and get yourself a USB thumb drive, a fairly large one. It has to be able to fit all of your data on it, or an external hard drive would work well too. And go ahead and plug that into your computer and take this opportunity to back up all your data. Because while I never had this happen to me during my testing, there's always a chance that something could go wrong and you'll have to reload Windows. And if that happens, it'll be really nice to have a backup of your data. And it's always good to back up. You can never back up enough because, you know, when tragedy strikes, it's always great to have a fallback and your backup is your fallback. So let's get into this now. Since this is a test system, there's really no reason to back anything up. Literally the only documents on this system are these three right here that I'm using to create this video. Other than that, this is a fresh copy of Windows. So what you need to do is go ahead and copy whatever it is that you have, and then just like you would use the regular file explorer within Windows, copy these documents over to another drive. And to do that, you would just copy them, go back to your PC, and go to whatever thumb drive or USB external drive you have and paste them into there. Once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and close this. And now we're gonna to get to actually fixing this system. And the way we do that is we're gonna click on start, go to all programs, and we wanna go over to hard disk tools. And from there, you wanna to go to partitioning tools and you wanna pick the EZUS Partition Master. And you know, I don't know if I'm actually pronouncing that right, and if I'm not, I'm sorry, but this is the program we need. So go ahead and click on that program and give it a minute to start up. Now just keep in mind when you're running these programs, they may take some time to actually get going in some cases, because remember, you're running your computer off of a USB thumb drive, and it's not as fast as a hard drive, so, be patient, it'll happen. 
All right, now that it's open, we wanna find our primary disk that we have. You should have taken out whatever backup disk you have out at this point. You don't need it in the computer anymore. So right now we know that disk one is our main operating system. That is our C drive right there. And you can see that it's a basic GPT partition. That's definitely the one that we wanna fix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on that and you can see where it says convert to MBR. Go ahead and click on that. And then once you click on that, it will pop this up to the top right here. Now the program hasn't really done anything yet. It's just shown you what it's going to do. In order for it to do what it is you're telling it to do, you have to tell it to execute whatever commands you've done. So let's do that now. So we're gonna come up to the top right here and go ahead and click execute one operation. And this window will open, go ahead and hit apply. And it's gonna take a minute to convert the drive. Now this drive is an SSD, so it shouldn't take it too long, but once it converts it, we can move on to the next step. Go ahead and push the finish button now. And now from here, now the drive is in the condition that it is. It's ran all of the pending operations, so everything's done. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is completely optional, and it has a little bit of danger in it. So be cautious with these next things, and if your system doesn't look exactly like mine, then just don't follow them. Go ahead and disregard the next few steps from here, because like I said, they are optional. At this point, the system will boot into Windows, at least it should. But I'm gonna show you how to clean it up to make it exactly the way it was when it was first put together. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so if your partition layout looks exactly like mine, then you should be able to do this. If it doesn't, it means that you have some proprietary partitions from the manufacturer and you may not wanna follow these next steps. So if you have this NTFS partition, usually it's about 500, 600 megs at the end of the disk, and you have this 100 meg one that's unallocated at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this very last one here. This is your Windows recovery partition. And unfortunately, because of all the things we've done, we've completely ruin this. Windows won't use this as recovery from this point, so there's no point in having it. So go ahead and right click on it and hit delete and hit OK and it's going to take care of that partition. It's going to get rid of it. And at this point you want to go to your C drive and you want to take up some of that unallocated space because there's 647 megabytes and we want to be able to use that. So we're going to right click here, we're going to hit resize and move, and then from the very right hand side, you wanna click on this and just drag it over just like this so it takes up all the space and go ahead and hit okay. And at this point, you shouldn't see any unallocated space at all. It should be completely filled with partitions. You have your system partition at the beginning and then you have your regular OS partition, your C drive here. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and hit execute again and we're gonna hit apply. And this one's gonna take a minute to finish. It's gotta go through and resize and delete partitions. And once it does, we can go ahead and hit the finish button. And at this point, we can go ahead and close the program because we're done with it now. And we can come down to the start menu, click on start, click on this little arrow here, and go ahead and hit restart. All right, so now we're rebooting back into Windows and hopefully it should boot into Windows 10 just fine because I pulled the thumb drive out and let's see what happens. So we're definitely a good sign. We see the Windows 10 boot logo here. All right, so the system is booted into Windows now and it looks like our fix worked. However, there's a couple more steps and these are also optional steps, but I would recommend following them if you want your system to be exactly like it was when we started. So let me show you what to do. All right, so from here, we're gonna click on our folder icon, our file explorer. And from File Explorer, we're gonna click on this PC. And as you can see now, we have a C drive and a D drive. Well, the D drive is the system reserve partition, and it really doesn't have to be here. In fact, it's probably a good idea not to have the system reserve partition being used at all. This is some important system files that the computer needs that doesn't need to be shown to the user. So the way we get rid of that is go ahead and right click on your start menu and go into disk management. And then once disk management opens, we wanna to go to the reserve partition, which is this first one, right click on it and go change drive letter and paths. And then from here, you can see here's where it has its D drive. Just go ahead and hit remove, hit yes, and that'll remove the drive letter. So now if we go back to my computer, you can't see the system reserve partition. You can only see the C drive.
Now the next step, and this step I'm not going to do in this video because it takes too long, but remember we had to delete the Windows recovery partition, so you won't be able to use any of the recovery functions of Windows until you fix that problem. So the way that you fix it is you go ahead and download the media creation tool from Microsoft and just do an in-place upgrade of the same version of Windows 10 that you currently have. And when you do that, it will add the recovery partition back. Now if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, it's an optional step. But if you ever need those recovery tools, it, it's kind of important. But the next time you get a feature update to Windows 10, it's going to do it anyway. So eventually that recovery partition is going to be restored on its own. So in the meantime, hopefully this was helpful to you. And hopefully this is a lesson for not only me, but for you guys as well. I need to be clearer in my videos. I should have made it extremely clear in my last video not to follow those steps if you don't have a UEFI BIOS. And you know what? That's my bad. And hopefully this video will get you back working again and get you out of not booting. Unfortunately, if that was the case for you, then I apologize if that happened to you. But also make sure in the future that when we're doing some of these, some of these how-tos are pretty complicated and some of them have the result that could lead to a system not booting. And if that's the case, then make sure you listen to these videos really carefully to make sure you're not missing a step or you're not doing something that really shouldn't be done on a system that you have. And it never hurts to message me first. I try to respond to all the comments. I know I don't get to all of them, but I try to respond to as many of them as possible. And if you have doubts on whether or not you should follow a how-to, just ask me and hopefully I can get back to you and let you know. But if this video was helpful to you, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Oh, and hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.